it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, your company wants to try out the cloud with low risk. They want to archive approximately 100 terabytes of the log data to the cloud and test the analytics features available to them there, while also retaining that data as a long-term disaster recovery pack. Which two steps should they take? So they have to archive a large amount of data, test analytics features, and also retain data as a long-term solution. Let's do a requirement analysis of these. One, to archive 100 terabytes. That's a fairly large amount of storage. We should have a storage solution that scales easily. Now, all those 100 terabytes of data might not be immediately there, so it should be able to also allocate that storage space incrementally. Once you reach 10 terabytes, you should not have to allocate a new disk now to accommodate the next 10 terabytes. A managed solution that will automatically grow or that will automatically allow you to load more data would be the best. We want to test the analytics features. So this is an ad hoc approach. We have not fully decided that we're going to go with one solution yet. So the solution should ideally again be managed for us and we shouldn't have to create a lot of custom code to get this working. Since we are also doing analytics, a solution tuned for reads is preferable, something that is suitable for analytics processing. Lastly, we have to retain this data for a long time. So in this case, the long-term long -term storage solution that we use should ideally have very low cost. Not only that, when there is a disaster, we should be able to recover it quickly. It shouldn't be that it takes three or four days to recover or even many, many hours. Given these requirements now, let's look at the solutions. When it comes to storage, you should have this diagram in your mind always. It will give you ideas about what kind of storage is required for what kind of solution. So if you haven't studied this before, take a minute, study this and then continue. Now looking at the options. Option A suggests load logs into BigQuery. Now BigQuery is a OLAP solution, an online analytics processing solution. So it is optimized for reads. It also scales very easily to terabytes and even petabytes of data without having to pre-allocate any of that, which means that it is perfect for ad hoc or test queries. You want to run a query, just load the data, however much it is, and then run the query on that. You don't have to allocate a disk saying, okay, we are going to have 10 terabytes of data on this or 50 terabytes of data. That's not required. It's automatically done for you. It automatically allows you to run SQL queries and therefore you don't need any custom solution. All you have to do is load the data, run the SQL queries that your analysts are usually familiar with and you've got your results. Moreover, for the long-term recovery uh, requirement, BigQuery will automatically archive older data. So data that you haven't used for a long time is automatically going to be moved into a lower cost storage. So considering all of this, BigQuery pretty much covers all of our requirements. And if I had to choose only one solution for this requirement, it would be BigQuery. But we do need to choose two. Not only that, the second solution we chose is going to take care of a critical aspect that we haven't yet covered in these options. So moving on, B suggests that we load the logs into Cloud SQL. However, Cloud SQL cannot scale the way BigQuery scales. It's useful for up to tens of terabytes of data, but beyond that, it cannot grow. Cloud SQL is also suited for transaction processing, 
it's an OLTP and not well suited for analytics. However, Cloud SQL does allow direct SQL queries, which is what your data analysts are going to be familiar with. So using any SQL editor viewer, you will be able to connect to the data and run SQL queries, which is good. However, it is not suitable considering the other requirements and therefore we will eliminate option B. Option C suggests to import logs into Stackdriver. Though Stackdriver has a good solution for logging, it is not suitable for long-term data storage. In fact, the recommendation is that logs in Stackdriver have to be exported to some other solution like BigQuery or Cloud Storage for archival and later analysis. So Stackdriver is not where you store historic logs and definitely it's not the place where you import historical logs. It is a solution that is used for real-time log capture and of course analysis for a certain number of days but not uh, for very very long terms. So importing logs into Stackdriver is not a good option and we'll eliminate that. Option D suggests that we insert the logs into Cloud Bigtable. Now Cloud Bigtable is optimized for both read and write. It is not a pure analytic solution. So that doesn't score well. Also Cloud Bigtable is a NoSQL solution. You cannot run SQL queries on it. There might be other ways to run queries on it, but it wouldn't be what the analysts are typically used to. It is also not effective for long-term archival and storage. However, it does easily scale to many, many terabytes of data, including 100 terabytes, which is a small change for what big table can accommodate. But again, since the other requirements don't match, we are going to have to eliminate Cloud Big Table as an option. Option E suggests that we upload log files into Cloud Storage. Now, Cloud Storage is not an analytic solution. Cloud Storage is more of a data lake and not a data warehouse. You can put any kind of data there as blobs or objects, but it is not an effective place from which you can do a lot of querying. You can do federated querying using certain data formats, but it won't be very performant. So by itself, cloud storage would not be a good solution. However, in terms of just storing data, it scales easily without having to pre-allocate any kind of disk space. So cloud storage can go to petabytes or exabytes of data, and you just have to keep putting files onto it and it will accommodate that. So 100 terabytes again is going to be easily accommodated within Cloud Storage. Cloud Storage also has very attractive rates for long-term storage. In fact, with the current options, the long-term long -term archival storage on Cloud Storage is less than half of what BigQuery storage can give you for long-term storage. So clearly cloud storage is more effective. Cloud storage is also very good for use as an intermediate staging point. So if you want to get 100 terabytes of data into BigQuery, one of the uh, approaches might be to get it first onto cloud storage using many different options that you can get, uh, you have on Google Cloud to import data onto cloud storage and then have BigQuery read from there occasionally to run your ad operations. So this is a great option for use as a data lake and for archive. In combination with BigQuery therefore, cloud storage for this requirement works very well. And therefore the combination of those two, A to use BigQuery and E to use cloud storage is a best two steps. If you're interested in picking up loads more learning on Google Cloud, go ahead and subscribe right away. Mm -hmm.